Good morning, Lion Hearts. How are you today? Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Well, hello, my friends. Well, the unfortunate side of being an adult happened today. I, uh, I could tell that I needed at least one, maybe two new tires. And so I took my car in to get looked at and uh, I said, can you check the brakes too? I feel like I need brakes. I not only need <laughs> two tires, but I need both front and back brakes and a few other things fixed. So until I get my car fixed, which is happening right now, we can't really go vlogging. So we're gonna take Ja out for a walk and then uh, go pay that, whatever that bill is gonna be and uh, we'll hit the road. I have something that I just found out was in Los Angeles recently and uh, I wanna go vlog it today. So we're gonna head over to kind of where the museum district is and uh, we're gonna check out something pretty worldly fascinating. Let's go. Bit of a windy day out here today. So I'd say it was probably two weeks ago that I mentioned to you that my friend Kevin was gonna be the guest on a podcast and that that podcast actually had something really interesting um, that they owned that's a pretty cool piece of television history. Well, he managed to make that happen and we're actually gonna go do that tomorrow. We're actually gonna go see that, but the people that own it have a very fascinating story themselves. So I'm kind of excited not only to see what we're gonna see, but for you guys to meet who we're gonna meet tomorrow. Oh, check this out, Bigfoot sighting, Bigfoot sighting. All right, they called me and told me that my car is finished. A couple of hundred dollars worth of maintenance, but I want to show you this. Yeah, check this place out. It's called Sacred Farts. And he's got all kinds of weird things in here, but it's not necessarily a store. I don't even think it's open. Batman mask. Look at all the stuff he's got inside there. Like I said, I don't even think it's really a store because nothing has prices on it. I think it's like one guy's collection that he's displaying inside this shop window. Yep, just thought I'd show that off. Now let's go take a look at, uh, see if my car is in fact done so we can go do some vlogging. Well, the not fun part of being an adult is paying three bills to make sure your car is roadworthy, but we got it done. Let's go do some vlogging. Now we're gonna head over to where the La Brea Tar Pits are. Something about a block away is what I wanna go see today. We're gonna be coming up on the gates of Paramount pretty soon. Keep your eyes open. Look at that red polar bear up there on top of that building. Yep. And there up above, you can clearly see the Writers Guild of America building. They're currently adding this onto the museum on the corner. And that big building right there is the Peterson Automotive Museum. And this intersection that we're waiting at right now is actually where uh, Biggie Smalls, Notorious B.I.G., was murdered. Well, if you take a look right over there, you can see the La Brea Tar Pits. Now, what I want to show you is actually right in front of this big skyscraper here well right here on Wilshire Boulevard is the largest section of the Berlin Wall outside of Europe and I actually met somebody on my trip recently that was kind of telling me that they were from Berlin and how their family was kind of divided by this um, what they were telling me is they said that you know back when this happened in 1961 there was a real pull because Berlin, while Germany itself was divided, it was um, partially run by four separate countries, and one of them being the Soviet Union. And the section that the Soviet Union had control over, they wanted to make it and keep it socialistic, and well, communistic actually. And um, the other part, the western part, was um, partially run by three different countries, two of them being United States and Great Britain, and they wanted to keep it open. What ended up happening was the Soviet side tried to convince their people that, um, that 
the capitalistic side was basically spreading what the Nazis, it was a continuation of what the Nazis were going to do um, in Germany. And so as they saw people from the eastern side deciding to um, cross borders and go to the western side, one night in August of 1961 they started constructing a wall uh, made of barbed wire and mesh and eventually would make it more permanent and that's what you see in front of us. The uh, Most of the graffiti was done on, uh, well obviously it was on the western side, and on the eastern side they had a death strip. They had removed a bunch of buildings and um, they had laid out a bunch of sand so that the guards and towers that were now positioned there um, could see any movement that was happening and um, would execute anyone trying to cross borders. Now the western side was able to pass through with no problem and the eastern side could never. So it was actually up for almost 30 years. It wasn't until 1989 that they realized there was a heavy resistance and um, they started making like part where you could partially cross and a bunch of protesters, like a bunch of people from the eastern side all showed up at the checkpoints and um, basically forced their way through. And that's what basically ended the uh, the Cold War separation that this wall was so heavily a part of. So this wall at one time, some places say it was 90 miles long, some say it was over 100. Um, but here is what looks to be a 10 paneled section of the wall. And like I said, it's the largest outside of Europe and it even has a little memorial thing on here. So let's read it. it says, the wall along Wilshire is an installation featuring 10 sections of the original Berlin Wall, measuring nearly 40 feet wide. It's the world's longest stretch of wall outside of Berlin. The Wendy Museum assembled the wall along Wilshire in 2009 as a component of the wall project, the museum's public art initiative commemorating the 20th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall. And then it says that they invited artists Kent Twitchell, who I've talked about, and various other artists to help um, unveil it. And it says that um, French-born Berlin-based muralist Thierry Noir, who was one of the first artists to paint the Berlin Wall in 1984, um, came back here and helped unveil it. And like I said, I met somebody at almost every trip I take, somebody when we start talking says, hey, have you been to Berlin yet? And I go, no, I haven't, but everybody always tells me to go. And they say it's a really interesting um, cultural mecca now. They say that there's this great music scene and this great nightlife and this great art scene, which is pretty amazing when you consider how much of it was so oppressed for so many years. So let's take a little time to look at each piece of the wall. Now they do have some pieces of the wall still up in Berlin as a reminder, uh, but for the most part, by 1991, they had really removed the greatest chunk of it. Here you can see John F. Kennedy and the man who told Gorbachev to tear down the wall, Ronald Reagan. And then you also have Mandela. And they also had, when this was originally around, they had um, like barbed wire and things like that. They had um, guard dogs on the other side, but they also had like a tubing that went over the top like this big tube so that you couldn't climb over it. It kind of like hampered your your possibility of getting a grip or getting over. Wow. I just, I think this kind of stuff is so fascinating and to know that there's a big chunk of it like this right here in Los Angeles. I had to come see it. And every day tons of people walk past it and don't even seem to care. Yeah, sorry if this is a little hard to hear today, guys. We are having an unusual amount of wind in Los Angeles today, and no matter what camera I would have brought, I just couldn't get away from it. Check this out. I mean, that is that is a, a serious amount of oppression, and one of the people that I met was telling me, like I mentioned, he said, to hear the stories from my family, he said, like, my father was, immediately when they knew that this was going to happen was immediately thinking 
telling his brother to get out of the east side of Germany, whereas his brother's family, much like we're divided now in politics, they couldn't see, you know, they believed the other side. They believed the side they lived on, and they said they couldn't see why you would want to be in the west. And so, how he described it is he said that they sold it to the people of the east German side as we're creating this wall so that the fascist capitalists can't come in and tear apart our way of life. But in reality, he said what it really was was a way of keeping them from being able to leave. If you notice, down here it's all McDonald's and Burger King, KFC, it's all product placement, open on Christmas Day. Even uh, Captain America kind of looks like, kind of looks like Eddie the Ripper from Iron Maiden. This side at the time was known as like the, the Democratic side, the Eastern side was the Democratic party. And another interesting thing was that at one point what really caused a lot of this to escalate was the, uh, the diplomats from the American side or the British side, they were all supposed to be able to enter East Germany to conduct business. However, there were certain checkpoints that they had to go through and one of the times that one of the American ambassadors was um, trying to come through, they denied him access and it basically caused a standoff. It caused tanks on the US side as well as the Soviet side to come out at the checkpoint and basically have a showdown, um, face a face off. And John F. Kennedy was the one who called the Soviets and asked them to back off and then we backed off as well. And so just a very chaotic history I remember I was in second grade when the wall came down. I remember coming to school that day and our teacher telling us that the Berlin Wall, people were tearing the Berlin Wall down. I had no idea what that meant, but it's so interesting to think that that happened not too long ago, you know? 1961 wasn't all that long ago. And yes, I would love to go to Berlin. I would love to visit Berlin. And very fittingly, it's right across the street from the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. LACMA, we call it. Well, since we were right across the street, I'll give you a little taste of this if you've never seen it before. You've probably seen this in a lot of movies. All the kids are out here, they're all excited because they keep seeing the uh, the mammoths right here moving. It's because they have them tied to a rope so they don't float away. <laughs> I've vlogged a lot of this before, so if you wanna see more of it, go look up on my channel, the La Brea Tar Pits. We're gonna head out of here now. Looks like we're getting out of here just in time too. A battle has broken out. Check this out, this is the back of the American Folk Art and Craft Museum. Speaking of notorious B.I.G., Biggie Smalls right there. Now we're taking Ja over to the park so he can play a little bit. It is insanely windy, I'm telling you. Yeah, there's a few dogs out here. While I was gone, it rained so much, he didn't get to do much playing, so he's probably got a lot of pent-up energy. Like that little one. There he goes. Now he's playing with the little puppy.
we're gonna take off because we just got such a massive gust of wind it blew over all the chairs and I don't want Jaw to get a bunch of dust in his eyes. Okay. Well, that's one way to sell a car. Discreet, but that's one way to sell a car. Well, 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 guess what? My friends from Merch 5 were in town. We went out and had dinner and they brought me a new t-shirt. The metal Jordan and Jaw. Check that out, we got our own makeup. Look at that guy. What I love is how they nailed my beads and my watch, look at that. Awesome. Well, Lionhearts, we're gonna call it a night. Hope you guys enjoyed seeing the largest piece of the Berlin Wall outside of Europe today. I know I certainly did. I can't even imagine living separated like that. Not being able to go travel anywhere, go see anything, not having any choices. Pretty good reminder. Have a great night, everyone. We'll see you all tomorrow. Goodbye.